All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the brand new content series here at our channel on YouTube. This is John Rodriguez here. I'm very excited to be here with all of you uh, to get started on a new series of videos in here, brand new content that we are creating for you guys. I'm very excited for that. So if you're new in here, please consider uh, subscribing to our channel, all right? And go ahead and enable the notifications as well so that you can be notified whenever we release new content because today we are going to discuss what is multi-cloud and why you should learn it right now and that is related to one of the very common mistakes that i see it professionals making when they ask me hey john which cloud provider is the best is it aws is it azure is it google cloud is it our cloud infrastructure when in fact they should be looking to the other side and that's exactly what we're going to discuss on this video but first of all let's run the intro So once again, as I told you, please consider subscribing to our channel. Give me um, a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video and let's get to the content, right? So uh, let's just start first from the beginning. What is multi-cloud? What is this concept, right? What it means basically. So basically, multi-cloud is a strategy where the companies are using to use the best of the major cloud providers, which are AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and other cloud infrastructure, right? In fact, as you can see on this Forbes article, 90% of the companies have a multi-cloud destiny, right? So um, that's why it is so important that you learn multi-cloud and you should do it right now. And the reason for that is as we speak, as I'm recording this video, there are many companies running multi-cloud architectures right now as we speak so um, there are a lot of opportunities out there for companies looking for IT professionals who are specialized in multi-cloud right meaning um, multiple cloud providers that are looking for people to help them to maintain to migrate and to implement new environments so that's a huge opportunities for IT professionals that I can understand that very well, right? And one of the biggest mistakes that I see many IT professionals making is, hey, John, uh, is it better to learn only AWS or only Azure, only Google Cloud or only our cloud infrastructure? And uh, the answer for that is if you look at this article, it basically says that 90% of the companies have a multi-cloud destiny, right? So let's do a quick mapping here. So if 90% of the companies have a multi-cloud destiny, basically means that only 10% of the remaining um, you know, other companies are going to invest in just uh, one cloud provider, right? Or not even are going to use the cloud, correct? So doing this quick math, if you, we compare now uh, the amount of companies using multi-cloud strategy with the uh, number of job opportunities that are going to be open in the future, and right now you're gonna notice that whoever have you know the multi-cloud knowledge, the IT professionals that have the multi-cloud knowledge, will have access to 90% of the job opportunities right because 90 percent of the companies are using multi-cloud and the it professionals that know only uh one cloud provider for example will have access to only 10 percent of the job opportunities right so just a simple math so that's why it's so important that you understand this multi-cloud opportunity right now and you should learn it immediately right so that you can uh, take advantage of the huge opportunity that is available right now, especially here in the US with so many thousands of job opens, right? Um, looking for IT professionals who are skilled on those cloud providers, okay? So now I wanted to cover 
um, you know, some of the use cases that you're going to see um, more and more, all right, on the companies, the reference architectures and how the multi-cloud architectures are getting used that you can see how important it is as you, you are as a chief professional have a good grasp of multi-cloud technologies. So the first use case that I wanted to show you right now is the use case using Microsoft Azure and our cloud infrastructure, okay? In fact, this is a reference architecture that was just announced by Oracle and Microsoft Azure where uh, they created this partnership to allow companies using Microsoft Azure to uh, use those applications when on Azure connected to Oracle databases on our cloud infrastructure, which is pretty amazing, right? So let's have a look on that. So basically, as you can see, uh, Oracle and Microsoft Azure recently created this partnership where uh, Microsoft Azure customers can now use Oracle databases um, you know, that are going to be hosted in our cloud infrastructure on applications sitting on Azure, right? And how it basically works. So if you see on this architecture, you can see that basically here on the left hand side, you have the Microsoft Azure and the auto cloud infrastructure on the right hand side, right? So let's say that a company uh, is already using Microsoft Azure and they wanted to use Oracle database running in a high performance infrastructure like Oracle Exadata, right? Which is uh, the highest performance machine to run Oracle databases. And I have actually implemented many of them and still uh, working for Oracle and it's super powerful. But let's say that this company is already using Azure and they wanted to keep the application running on Microsoft Azure, but they want to take advantage on Oracle database running on top of Exadata infrastructure, right? So in those cases, what the companies can do is they can uh, leave the application deployed and running on Microsoft Azure using some cloud native service like the Azure App Service or even the Azure Kubernetes Service, for example, or even uh, in a simple virtual machine, right? And those applications can connect to the Oracle database sitting on auto cloud infrastructure, right? And all this deployment process and management of the Oracle database can be done through the Azure portal, right? Because it is a, a service that integrates natively with Microsoft Azure portal, okay? And then uh, on top of that, you can also consider having uh, identity federation, right? So let's say that this company using Azure has a on-premises Active Directory connected to Azure Active Directory to serve authentication and authorization to that given company. And they can also consider federating those uh, users inside of Azure Active Directory to the OCI identity domain so that you know, the OCI users can actually connect and log into uh, OCI using the Azure Active Directory credentials, right? Which is pretty amazing. The other thing here that's very important on this architecture, and, and I would consider that this is a secret sauce, is this part in here, the Oracle Interconnect for Azure Private Tunnel, right? So it's basically a private interconnection between Microsoft Azure and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure using a private and high performance, low latency, uh, private connection, which allows the application sitting on Microsoft Azure to connect to the Oracle databases sitting on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure in a low latency way, right? Very low latency way. Like, um, you know, both application and database would be co-located inside of the same data center or very close to each other, right? So uh, that is the secret sauce in here. And then always uh, all of that is happening through, you know, the Azure Express route that is configured on Azure side, right? And the Auto Cloud Infrastructure Fast Connect, which is configured here on Auto Cloud Infrastructure side. And then as you can see, uh, when this is configured, the users and companies can use uh, the combination of Azure services for the application layer, for example, and Oracle database services for the database layer sitting on our cloud infrastructure, right? So as you can see, this is a multi-cloud architecture, right? Because we are using two different cloud providers in here, Microsoft Azure and Oracle cloud infrastructure, 
Um, now you probably are wondering, that's cool, John, but probably only the DBAs should know all of this, right? And uh, unfortunately, you're not correct because think about that. This is uh, a complex infrastructure, right? That many IT professionals in different competencies would work to make sure that this environment is running as it should be, right? So we have, you know, a networking layer in here with somebody from a networking team would take care of, you know, the peering between the virtual networks, the connectivity between the cloud providers. We have the application services in here with somebody uh, that manages the applications would take care as well of those environments, making sure that they are running fine. And not to mention the developers that would be working to develop the applications um, to work on this architecture or even refactor the applications to make sure that uh, those applications would work in a multi-cloud architecture. And right? so you see that getting this knowledge in here is not only for DBAs, it's actually for every single IT professional that would like to work with multi-cloud architecture, right? And especially also for, you know, the IT management for the leaders that are going to lead the implementations and um, operations of those sorts of architectures. Very important that um, those individuals have the multi-cloud knowledge, okay? And the other thing is there is uh, another reference architecture that I want to show you. And this one is more uh, for companies using cloud native architectures, using um, you know containers, Kubernetes and all of that. So um, this is one of the very interesting uh, ones as well, which is the Google Cloud Anthos Multi-Cloud, right? So Google Cloud has created a service that allows um, you know, a given company to manage the Kubernetes clusters uh, using a single control plan, a unified control plan, right? So what it means is basically, if you look at this diagram in here, starting from the left-hand side in here, you see that the traditional pattern, uh, whenever a company has Kubernetes clusters, right, uh, in different cloud providers, uh, if they are not using Anthos, for example, they would need to work on those environments like in, a, you know, different silos, right? So meaning that if they have an application running on AWS, a cluster running on AWS, Kubernetes services on AWS, for example, they would need to go there and do all the development operations on that cluster. And the same thing if it's running on Google Cloud, the same thing if it's running on Microsoft Azure, for example, right? Now, when you use uh, Anthos, Anthos actually uh, unifies all the uh, planning, development operations of multi-cloud Kubernetes clusters, right? Sitting in different cloud providers, which basically helps the companies to manage and operate those clusters uh, using a single control plan, right? So from Anthos, you can manage clusters on, on AWS, on Google Cloud, and on Microsoft Azure in a unified way. Okay, so you see um, that multi-cloud is here and is here to stay. And uh, you see now, looking at these use cases, uh, why you as a IT professional should learn multi-cloud and you should do it right now, right? Because there are a lot of companies already using those architectures and they are looking for IT professionals that actually have those skill sets to make the things to happen, right? So that is key that you need to understand if you want to be successful on this market okay and uh, finally uh if you enjoyed this uh video right give me a thumbs up okay but before we wrap up i wanted to also share with you a few benefits of knowing or having multi-cloud hands-on expertise number one here would be of course that you're going to have a you know broader range of opportunities for you because if you look at the job descriptions right now the companies are looking for individuals that know more than one cloud provider right so that's the number one and number two is if you develop a multi-cloud hands-on knowledge you're going to feel way more confident working on those different platforms if compared with uh, working in just one cloud provider right so that's why you should consider learning multi-cloud and doing it right now okay and finally if you have any questions regarding to multi-cloud uh to all that we just covered leaving here um 
in the comment section for me and also if you wanted to see the hands-on on this reference architecture that i just showed you also please leave a comment in here let me know if you want to see that in a hands-on way because i'm going to create a few hands-on videos and i would love to hear your feedback all right so with that i wanted to thank you so much for watching this video and hope to see you in the next time